Hi, I'd like to talk a little bit about all of the news that we've been uh, hearing about, about the uh, impending um, housing market crash that's about to come our way. Uh, so I'd like to give you my thoughts uh, on, on what I think is going to happen and, uh, and where we're headed. Uh, I'll start right off by, uh, by saying uh, please uh, like, subscribe, and, uh, and share if you enjoy the content, and please let us know uh, your comments below. Uh, I welcome your comments, positive, negative. Please let me know your thoughts. So I like to start off by saying that I disagree completely that a massive market crash is coming our way. I just don't think that the numbers support it, and I'll get a little bit into it um, further, further along the video. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about where we are today. Today we're in a crazy market. We have a tremendous amount of demand that is um, far outpacing the supply. I mean, that's what's driving the crazy market that we're seeing. The demand has been spurred on by record low interest rates. Uh, COVID has brought about a new sense of uh, wanting to own a home. Uh, millennials have entered their prime home buying years. They don't want to live at home with their parents anymore. They want to own their own place. They want a piece of the, of the American dream as well, uh, to use an old cliche. And they want to start acquiring wealth and building up equity rather than throwing money away on rent, paying their landlord's um, mortgage. So it makes perfect sense that people want to buy. Um, but what we're seeing right now is a lot of folks are priced out of the market, especially, uh, you know, uh, the working class. They, they, they want their piece of the American dream as well. And it's becoming very, very difficult for uh, these folks to enter the marketplace as prices get uh, crazy high. Uh, we're, we're not in a healthy market when you see uh, 10, 15, 20 offers on a property the first day. Uh, most of which are above asking. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. It, th this type of price appreciation can no longer be sustained when it outpaces uh, the growth in wages. I mean, it's just, it can't be sustained. So what we need is a market that is healthy, that is more balanced, that gives people a fighting chance at buying the property, uh, as opposed to uh, being priced right out to cash buyers coming in from out of state. So do I think a correction is coming? Do I think that we're going to see a moderation in price appreciation? Absolutely. I don't think that this will be sustained. But do I think we're going to see a massive crash where all of these people that are in forbearance are going to suddenly foreclose overnight? Absolutely not. About a year ago, we had 6 million people in the forbearance program. That number is down to 2.2 million today. Okay, So that means that roughly 4 million people got back on track over the last 12 months. The 2 million or so that are left will continue to do what they can to get back on track. The vast majority of them will work with the lender or they will take action to get back to work and get back current on their mortgage. Not all these folks are going to foreclose. These people are far more credit worthy than they were back in 2008. Remember, these folks went through the ringer when they applied for their mortgage. They had to provide two years worth of tax returns. They had to provide pay stubs. They had to provide bank statements. The lender put them through the ringer before approving the loan, okay? So the loan requirements were far more stringent. So these two million people are folks that are credit worthy and they will do what they can to get back on track. The lenders have no incentive to foreclose. Remember, this is forbearance, it's not foreclosure, all right? So the year or two years or year and a half that they didn't pay, they're going to tack it on to the end of the mortgage. They will find a solution. Don't be surprised if you start to see things like 40-year mortgage products come out to try and keep people in their homes. All right. So will we see some foreclosures? Absolutely. Are we going to see 6 million foreclosures overnight? Absolutely not. Furthermore, the current demand for homes, we have a shortage of about 4 million homes right now as it is. So even if 4 million homes were to hit the market tomorrow, it would be absorbed by the demand. So that would not lead to a crash. Will it lead to an, a, a, a stabilization, a moderation, more healthy market where homes sit on the market for maybe 60 to 90 days, where they get maybe two or three offers as opposed to 20 offers the first day? Absolutely. That's where I see us headed. That's where I think we're going. And I would not be surprised if we get there by the end of this year. And that's good news for buyers. So my advice to my clients is do not overpay. You should never overpay. I don't care how much you love the house. It makes no sense to be underwater from day one. 
Second of all, don't waive the appraisal contingency, okay, just to get into the house. It just, it makes no sense to overpay above what the home appraises for. Now you can waive it, but get it done within the 10 day due diligence. So you still protect yourself. That gets you under contract, okay, keeps the sellers happy, but you still are protected by an appraisal and you can still back out if that number doesn't make sense for you. Okay, so be smart. Buy the house if it makes sense. Don't overextend yourself. Keep at least three months, preferably six months of cash reserves on hand, okay? But don't overpay. Don't overpay. And remember, it's a beautiful place to call your own. And you want to stay in it, you know, for, for, for a longer term. This isn't a one-year deal. If you're going to stay in the house for six, seven, eight years, and there is a bit of a correction a year from now, you'll absorb it. You'll absorb it if you didn't overextend yourself, if you didn't overpay, you didn't pay above appraisal, and you kept three to six months of cash reserves on hand, and you have a good credit score, you're, you're gainfully employed with enough uh, income sources to cover yourself, then absolutely buy a house. Just be smart about it. Again, please like, share, and subscribe, and let me know your comments.